Hello and welcome to WTMB Today. I'm your host, Wendy Benton. Thank you for joining me. I'm here with James Gose. He is the physical therapist and the director of Star Physical Therapy Clinic in Ottawa. Welcome, James. Thank you, Wendy. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm glad to have you. You're here to talk about um, the clinic and uh, you guys, uh, your one year anniversary is coming up soon. And we want to talk about the location, where you are, and get into uh, a little bit of the physical therapy and things that you do there. Today, we're focusing on neck and back pain. And I know our audience will be very interested in this um, since you said that's the number one issue of patients today, one of the co top complaints. Um, give us a little background about you, though, before we get started. I'd be happy to, Wendy. I've been a physical therapist, believe it or not, 27 years. Um, I've primarily been in outpatient orthopedic clinics, which is what Star Physical Therapy is in Ottawa. It's an outpatient orthopedic clinic. Uh, along with being a licensed physical therapist, I initially got a Bachelor of Science, but then the entry level for a physical therapy, a therapist these days, is a doctoral degree. So I went back to school five years ago and gained my doctorate of physical therapy. And then besides having my bachelor's and doctorate degree, you can be board certified in specialty areas by the American Board of Physical Therapy Specialties. So I'm a board certified orthopedic specialist, but I'm also a very hands-on therapist and I have a lot of manual therapy certifications. So there are certain preeminent evidence-based manual therapy certifications that you can get that are taught worldwide in most physical therapy programs around the world. So I'm certified in the McKinsey approach of manual therapy, the Maitland approach of manual therapy, and the Mulligan approach of manual therapy. So that just means I use my hands a lot to do corrected techniques on the spine and the extremities as well. Well, before the show we've talked kind of extensively about uh, spinal um, disorders and problems and share with the audience some of the the common neck and back pain that people complain of. Yeah and spine problems are so common uh, I always say you can't be a physical therapist and not know how to treat spine effectively. Uh, back pain is now considered the number one reason that people go to a family practice doctor even surpassing the common cold. Uh, neck pain is very common Back pain is more common than neck pain. Neck pain is more common in females than males. Back pain is more common in males than females. But there's a number of common problems that we see, bulging disc, degenerative disc. Those are the primary issues. I always say that we don't see patients go to the doctor commonly for a strained muscle in the spine or a ligament in the spine. Those things certainly occur and they hurt but they usually tend to get progressively better with each passing day with maybe over-the-counter medication. Within seven to 10 days, a strained soft tissue structure like a muscle or ligament usually resolves and the patient gets well. But things like a bulging disc or a degenerative disc tend to persist for weeks, months, sometimes years and need more medical attention. Well, and, and we'll talk a, a minute about uh, some back pain that I had had because I, I have been thinking one thing, and you suggest that it could be something totally different. Um, as far as the mechanical problems, how, how do you assess someone coming in if, if they have back pain? What do you typically do for them or ask them to do as far as evaluating? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. It's, the evaluation is extremely important. We can't help a patient if we don't really know what we're dealing with. So. A well-trained physical therapist should be able to determine what is the incriminate structure that's producing pain. Is it a ligament? Is it a muscle? Is it a joint in the spine? Is it a bulging disc? Is it a flattened disc? And with proper training, you can take them through an exam of asking them what provokes their pain, what makes them worse, how does the patient perceive their pain behaving, and then the therapist can do an examination for example, in the McKinsey approach, we use what we call repeated motion exam. So we may have the patient stand up if we're looking at the lumbar spine, the low back, and have them start off with their baseline symptom, and then we have them maybe forward bend eight to 10 times. All the while we're asking, what does that motion do to your pain? Does it increase? Does it decrease? Does it make it go down the leg? Um, 
and what does that motion do to your pain? And then we'll change to backward bending, ask the same questions. And then we may get them on their back and do knees to chest stretching. And then over on the stomach and maybe some backward bending. Based on how the patient tells you their pain behaves prior to the exam and the results you get from the physical exam, the repeated motion exam, the patient, the, the well-trained therapist should be able to deduce what is the incriminate structure. Mm -hmm. As they say, if it quacks like a duck, it must be a duck. From all the information you gain from the patient interview and the physical exam, you should be able to say, this is, sounds just like a bulging disc. And this mm -hmm. is what we do for a bulging disc. Or it sounds just like a flattened degenerative disc. Or this sounds like a postural problem or a muscle problem. So the more you know about the problem, you can develop a more targeted, targeted correct, corrective approach. Okay. Well, and I had mentioned I have had um, a, a back pain issue, not really a, a problem yet, and I hope it never gets to that point, but it's to the left of my spine. And uh, when my children were younger, I was bathing them in the bathtub and just bent and strained, and, and this same area is what has come back and hurt for different reasons, or if I move a certain way, it, it will it will pull that same area. So in my mind, I'm thinking it's a muscle or ligament issue. And uh, I try to work out and stay in shape. But as you were going through demonstrating on, on the display, you said that it, it could very well be a disc problem. Correct. It's a common assumption that because you just have maybe central back pain or pain off to the side, it must be a muscle. Um, you, know, you didn't have a traumatic event that you can recall. Uh, certainly caring for young children is stressful to your back, but it's not like you fell down some steps mm -hmm. where you might have strained a muscle or you weren't in a car accident. Usually it takes some type of trauma to tear a muscle or strain a muscle or a ligament. We know in spine that the, one of the primary causes for back pain is the way humans live on the planet. And the research evidence suggests that humans spend up to 80% of their lives in some form of forward bent position. Taking care of small children causes a lot of forward bending of the spine. The number one occupation for back pain is truck driving, but they tend to be seated and their spine is flexed. So forward bending in with a slouched posture or forward bending of the spine causes a lot of problems. So why is that? One of the most common reasons we go to the doctor where we have enough severe pain is because of disc bulges. Disc bulges are most common between the ages of 20 and 50. The disc is well hydrated at that ages at, at those ages, and you've been around long enough for the forward bending loading to begin to cause the back wall of the disc to weaken and bulge. So what happens in producing a bulging disc? If this is the front of our spine and this is the back, we have the bones we call the vertebrae. In between each vertebrae is the disc. The disc is like a jelly donut in that there's a soft jelly-like center surrounded by an outer ring that keeps it all contained. So if we forward bend our spines, the vertebrae compress the front of the jelly donut and that causes the gel to begin to migrate toward the back. And we can get by with that for about 20 or 30 years with all the forward bending but the peak age for disc bulging is around 40. So around late 30s, 40s, the back wall of the disc may begin weakening from that backward pressure of the disc pushing back. It can eventually get to the outer layers, and you don't feel this until it gets to the outer layers and produces back pain. It can hit a ligament, which can cause the pain to refer off to the side. Ligaments have a lot of nerve supply and may hurt locally but it doesn't go down the leg unless it hits a nerve root, which is right behind the disc, and this can produce pain, numbness, tingling, and weakness all the way down to your foot, depending on what level of the nerves compressed. So forward bending causes the gel to push out the back, and we actually also say there's a common stat that 70% of people who come into the clinic have no re recollection of an injury that produced their back pain they'll come in for what we say no apparent reason. If we ask, how did you hurt your back? They say, I don't know. 
and they don't put two and two together that I've spent my entire life forward bending and that's usually the culprit that causes a bulging disc. Okay and so for instance with my back pain it very well could be that um, really where the pain's just traveling down the, the ligament um, into the left of my spine. Yes and uh, as we were talking before the show you know, thinking logically about the injury you mentioned, you said it started 12 years ago, perhaps related to forward bending, taking care of small children, and you're still having intermittent episodes of back pain. I ask you, do you think if you had a strained muscle, wouldn't it have healed by now? Wouldn't, wouldn't that back muscle? And you said, well, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And I would say the same thing. Again, torn soft tissue heals within a few weeks usually, gets better with time. Now, possibly, Again, if you'd had a traumatic injury, you would have enough scar tissue where you tore a muscle that it might keep recurring on you. But again, you'd have to ask yourself, why is it okay some days mm -hmm. and why is it uh, producing pain other days? That actually sounds more like a disc bulge because this gel in the disc can change rapidly. Some days you've moved in a way where a disc bulge is reduced and you feel fine. Mm -hmm. And other days you might have done a movement to push the bulge out and you're having symptoms again. So. Uh, you had mentioned your symptoms had begun to get more and more common. Again, that's, that's the nature of a disc injury. And again, if it's a strained muscle, why would it keep getting worse as you're trying to keep yourself fit? So potentially you could have a bulging disc, but it would take a good thorough evaluation to find out for sure. Okay. And the solution to that? Yeah. If you were to come into my clinic and I started asking you questions about when did your back pain occur? How did it occur? When are your symptoms worse? When are they better? All those would begin to give me clues as to what structure is involved in your pain. I would ask, uh, also I would clear questions about things that could produce back pain that are more of a concern. As you come in to see a physical therapist or a doctor, we can't always assume that all back pain is musculoskeletal, so we have to ask clearing questions to make sure you don't have bad things like a tumor in your stomach or something. Mm -hmm. Once I cleared all that out, I would uh, have you stand out, stand up, I'd look at your posture. I would ask you, Wendy, right now, how do you feel any pain while you're standing? And you might say no. And I would say, Wendy, bend over as far as you can. Does that provoke your pain? You may or may say yes or no after one repetition, but then I may say, let's do eight or 10. So with repetition of forward bending, I'd be saying, Wendy, what does that do to the back pain that brought you in to see me today? You may say, you know what, that's making my back hurt. And then I would have you stop and see what happens when you stop. And then I may say, okay, Wendy, now we're going to backward bend. And I would have you backward bend your spine and standing once, twice, maybe eight or ten times. And I would be asking you, Wendy, what does that do to your pain? So with the typical disc bulge, I mentioned forward bending tends to push the gel out. Mm -hmm. You might say, you know, as I forward bend, my back pain is starting to get worse. And that would mean that the vertebrae are compressing the front of the disc, pushing the gel toward the back, making it bulge more and it begins to hurt more. And then when I backward bend, you may say, you know what, that feels better. When I backward bend, it makes it feel better. The vertebrae may be compressing the back of the disc, pushing the gel back to the center of the disc, thereby reducing the disc bulge. So we correct and fix a lot of bulging disc by having patients do backward bending stretches and educating them that forward bending and slouching is what pushes the gel out and makes them hurt. Okay. So through examination, I would determine what motion is the most appropriate motion to fix your problem. And it's usually quite simple. I would send you home doing one or two uh, exercises in the same direction have you follow up in a day or two and say, Wendy, did you do your home exercises? Hopefully you would say yes. Mm -hmm. Have you been sitting with good posture? Hopefully you'll say yes. I'll say, uh, have you been trying to use good body mechanics and not forward bend so much? Hopefully you'll say yes. And have you been doing your backward bending stretches? Hopefully you'll say yes. And then I'll say, well, then how do you feel today? And hopefully you would say, you know, that back pain I've been having is much better because disc problems tend to respond very rapidly to these corrective techniques. The gel in the disc can move within minutes. I can't tell you how many times I've had a patient come in the clinic with horrible back and leg pain. 
I would take them through the same exam I just mentioned, determine what direction of movement we need to do to correct the problem. Commonly, they're laying on their stomach, maybe propping on their forearms or doing backward bending stretches. And after a minute or two, they say, you know, that pain's coming out of my leg. And after a few more minutes of, of working with some certain techniques, they eventually say, wow, my back pain is feeling better. And I just had a patient the other day, after 20, 20 minutes, say, wow, that's amazing. And I say, yeah, I hear that a lot because it, they think that you have a magic wand and to, to make someone who comes in the door feeling so badly feel better so rapidly, they're always surprised. But if in a well-trained spine therapist, you can discern what the incriminant structure is rapidly and really target treatment toward correction as opposed to doing what we would call a palliative approach. A therapist who may not have these skills might rely on just pain relieving modalities like moist heat or electric stimulation or ultrasound. Those are all things that are just geared at treating the symptom, mm -hmm. but they're not geared at toward any type of mechanical correction. And they may feel good short term, but they don't fix the problem. And they could be going for weeks for that kind of treatment and not really get better other than for maybe 20 minutes of relief. Uh, whereas opposed to this, it's a quick corrective pr uh, type of treatment where they may only have to attend treatment three or four visits and, and then they know how to fix themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this could be really a, a lifestyle uh, change, something you need to implement on a daily basis. So you, you come three or four times for physical therapy, but you would want to continue it. Mm -hmm for the rest of your life most likely, which is it's okay. We all need to be doing stretching and <laughs> right. exercising. <laughs> but you need to know the right stretching. Yes. I can't tell you yes. how many of my disc pain patients who come in the door thinking it must be a muscle, and so they're trying to stretch down to their toes and they're bringing their knees to their chest, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. the things that would make it worse because they assumed, well, it must be a muscle. And those forward bending stretches just make them worse. If there's an assumption that their back pain is caused by weak abdominal muscles mm -hmm. and they start doing sit-ups mm -hmm. and it's a bulging Again. disc, it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. So, but the, you're right in saying that it should be a lifestyle and it's very simple. Understand, once we explain the cause and effect of what produced a disc problem, mm -hmm. the light comes on and they say, you know, I have been doing that. You're right. That's how that happens. And we say, look, to keep this from coming back, all you have to do is have a lifetime of proper sitting posture mm -hmm. and trying to use proper body mechanics where you're not forward bending a lot, occasionally doing some backward bending, and you can keep this under control. And I always say that, you know, I uh, hate to use a, a tough love technique, but the opposite is true. If they continue to sit slouched and do a lot of forward bending type stretching or use poor body mechanics, the gel in the disc can eventually erode all the way to the back wall of the disc and it doesn't just bulge but the disc wall could actually rupture and mm -hmm. the gel escapes and then there's no techniques that a physical therapist can do to put things back in. You'll have to talk with an orthopedic surgeon to fix the problem in a case like that. So it, it can be a progressive problem but caught in the right hands of a properly trained physical therapist it can be corrected and they never have to have problems with it again. Right. Well, and there, it, it, there's so much detail to this. Um, uh, we've talked about the bulging discs, and uh, you've alluded to that some of the degenerative disorders that uh, occur usually after the age of 55. And um, I would love for you to come back, James, to talk about those issues. I mean, like you said, neck and back pain is the number one complaint of patients. And I think it's very important, especially for our audience. And um, I know my family, my parents, my mother-in-law, uh, you know, they've had knee problems and hip problems and back problems. And I would love to get into the details of the degenerative uh, side of it and then what can be done for that. Because again, it's all about the therapy and proper techniques to help alleviate uh, some of that pain. I'd love to come so, back. Okay, okay, and also the neck. I've got a friend right now who's going uh, to therapy for neck pain, and you said that is more common in women. It is. 
Well, thank you so much, James, for being here today and talking about um, these disorders and the back and neck pain. I, I think um, everyone is very interested in that. I could go on and on for hours seriously talking about uh, the techniques that you need to do that are correct to fix those problems. But we will have you back again soon, and I hope you enjoyed today's uh, segment, and we will have James Ghost back. He is the um, director of Star Physical Therapy in Ultawa. And real quick, quickly, James, tell us where you're located in Ultawa. It's really easy to find. We're on Little Debbie Parkway. So if you know where Walmart in Ultawa is, just past Walmart on Little Debbie, we're immediately on the left. Okay. Well, and give James a call. We've had his information on the screen. So if you are in need of any of this we've talked today, please give him a call. He's extremely qualified, as you heard earlier, and, uh, and we'll have him back. So thank you for joining us today, and we will see you next time on WTMB Today.